Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, hanging out, all that stuff. I do appreciate you coming by and checking out my videos. And if you're new here, my name is Jim. I make photo editing videos showing you how to use software to post process your images, sharing tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way. Today I'm in Luminar 4 and I'm talking about a photo transformation where I took a photo and turned it into something that's um, very different. However, I think the word transformation um, generally implies that the end result is so completely vastly different from the original that you may not even be able to tell that they're the same photo. It's not that kind of transformation. This is what I consider a subtle transformation. I'm moving the light around, I'm changing colors, I'm adjusting um, things like skies and all that sort of stuff. And I'm transforming the photo from something that's kind of, I don't wanna say boring, but kind of boring, into something that has a lot more mood and interest and that sort of thing. And I do that with a number of different uh, tools or filters. And so let me show you the base photo. Here we go. This was the Mermaid Inn, and I think it's called Rye. It's a little town in southern England, super awesome with these cobblestone streets and that, I think they call it half-timbered kind of building. Anyway, it's a great little spot. It's a great little, um, uh, well, the town is great, but that little mermaid inn, we, I was with a couple of buddies. We went and they have a huge like pub in the back with a big fireplace. It's literally like you could walk into it, sat there and had a pint, waited for the light to change. Anyway, we realized, hey, it's blue hour. We better get out there and shoot. There wasn't a whole lot of a sunset. Um, and as you can see, these lights kind of give off that yellow glow, which is something I find in all my cityscapes. Uh, and just personally, I just don't like that kind of color. So I wanted to change things up color-wise. I wanted a better looking sunset and that sort of thing. So I turned it into that where um, it's, a, it's a fairly significant shift, but uh, I say transformation. It's kind of a subtle transformation because the, the moves that I've made in the different tools are kind of subtle. They're not massive. It's not like, oh, I did this and I went to 100. You know, it doesn't go to 11 or whatever. Um, it's fairly subtle in a lot of these moves. And um, yet the accumulation of all these moves over 12 different tools that I use resulted in taking a photo that looked like that and turning it into that, which is much more how I remember it. It's certainly how it felt. It was vibrant. I was excited. I just love this kind of stuff. Obviously, I put in a new sky. Let me reset these and I'll walk through the different moves that I made and kind of talk about my thought process as I do it. Let's get going. Okay, here we go. Now, there's my base photo. Again, kind of yellow. I'm in the light tool. I generally recommend starting there. It's very powerful. It is essentially what they called raw develop in Luminar 3, but there's the base photo. After a little bit of work here in light, I've got it looking like that. To me, I like those colors better, especially in a blue hour kind of scene. I don't want those strong yellowy kind of orange uh, lights dominating the scene. I want it to be a little bit more like that. Again, personal preference. So as you can see, I took the temperature significantly to the left, um, added a little bit of contrast and a little bit of lift in shadows. Very simple and straightforward approach there. Um, but I think mood-wise, it does a lot to sort of change the mood of the photo. When you have something that's kind of more yellow like that, to, like I said earlier, it's a little bit off-putting to me color-wise. Um, I love yellows and oranges if I'm getting a stunning sunset across a landscape and the sun's bursting through and that sort of thing. But something like this where the sun is out of frame, the sunset's not dominating the sky, and um, it's, it's barely even orange on the horizon, I, I don't expect to see a lot of orange light hitting down in this uh, street, right, which is kind of sheltered. Uh, anyway, so... I wanted to make it more blue is all I'm trying to say. Um, so there we go. Now, um, obviously I replaced the sky and if you're gonna replace the sky, that's something I actually recommend doing first. And I actually did that. I showed you the light tool first, but that's simply because I can't really turn that off without having to redo all these sliders. So first thing I did is I went to sky replacement. Um, my friend Matt Seuss, I'll put a link down below. He's got an amazing sky pack uh, that he sells. Uh, that I purchased, and this is one of those sunset skies from that pack. Uh, it is, it's just a fabulous pack. There's like 400 skies. He's got a couple of other sky packs. Like I said, I'll put a link down below, but um, I dropped that sky in, and, and as you can see, there's the before, and there's the after. What I was looking for was something actually with a little bit more sunset oomph than just the blue hour that I had. I love blue hour. It's probably my favorite time to shoot, unless I get an amazing sunset. Everybody likes those. But outside of that, I would probably say blue hour is my favorite time to shoot. But this one, I wanted that sky. If you look at the before and the after, it's still got a fair amount of blue in it. And if you saw the final result, I got some of that blue back. 
Um, a few adjustments here, nothing major. A little bit of horizon positioning, a little bit of closed gaps and sky local, um, and then uh, moving atmospheric haze. And you can see I did a little bit of sky temperature and sky exposure as well. So there it is before and after. So again, first step was this. Second step was back over here in Essentials where I did the light tool. Um, and then, uh, let me back up. The reason I do my sky first is because all my other edits are gonna impact the entire photo. So I don't wanna go fully edit a photo and then stick a sky in because the light and all that kind of stuff, the colors may not necessarily match. I wanna blend in the sky first then have my base photo, which includes the sky, and then go edit from there. So I did that, um, so new sky and then light, and then I went to AI Enhance, and here, this was just AI Accent. You can see what that did. It did brighten the photo quite a bit, um, and I still think it looks good in terms of light uh, distribution. In fact, it looks a little bit better. Um, my final, there's the uh, before and after that. My final, I add a little bit of moodiness back and rearrange the light a little bit. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, so AI accent and then AI structure. This was 20, so nothing major. You may not even be able to notice it that well in the video, but um, I think it added a little bit to the photo. Just gives it a little bit of pop. And one thing I didn't do, but you might wanna do in a scene like this, is go get detail enhancer and maybe paint it into some areas I personally don't recommend painting in detail into everything but the sky. You might think, oh, but they're buildings. They have structure or texture to them. They've got detail. Yes, they do, but my, this, again, personal preference. Obviously, all these videos are just my personal preference. Um, my personal preference would be if I were to wipe in uh, or paint in details, I would do it some in the cobblestones, maybe a little bit over here, tiny bit there. I wouldn't cover all the stuff on the left and all the stuff on the right. And the reason why is if you make it really bright and really detailed, the eye is gonna be drawn there. And I think the eye, it's kind of being drawn down the lane to the sunset. Um, I don't wanna distract the viewer. That's kind of how I think about that. Next was color, and this was pretty gentle, a vibrance of 15. So subtle, subtle moves. Again, it's the accumulation of things over time that really adds to the final result. But that was pretty subtle. I'm not even sure how well you can notice it. There's before and there's after. Okay, next I went over to the Creative tab and I already did Sky Replacement. I'm not doing Augmented Sky, but I did do Sunrays. Now, I've in the base photo, you can see the original. I got a little bit of a starburst on that light, but let's see, I was shooting at F9. So it probably would have done better if I'd have had a tighter aperture, but I did use sun rays here, and all I did is I placed the sun rays on top of that, and I just slightly enhanced it, and that's another subtle move. Um, you know, it's easy to put the sun rays in and then drag the sliders and you get this crazy stuff, and that can look cool on photos, but I'll use it sometimes on street lamps and things like that where I'm just trying to pop a little bit of a burst, like a starburst effect in the light, and I already had some of one, but there's the before, and then there's the after. Um, I just added a little bit of rays. Again, it's pretty subtle. Uh, and the truth is, this was a big light and it's kind of blown out. I'm just not gonna be able to really recover that. And I'm okay with that. I just wanted to add a few rays. So I just went in, did some subtle adjustments in sun rays. Next up was one of my favorites, which is mystical. And that's just a subtle adjustment. 15 there, you can see it just does a little bit of that contrast, a little bit of shadow. I think it looks nice there. And then I did what I commonly do, which is pop over to Orton and did a similar move there. Also 13, so pretty low, but those two have really added a little bit of mood. Um, they have added some contrast, and um, I think that it looks pretty good overall. I'm not quite done, so I'm gonna pop over now to the Pro tab, and I'm gonna start in Advanced Contrast. And as you can see, that had a huge impact on the sky. So let me show you one more time. There it is before, where it's a bit brighter, and now after, a little bit darker. So. That's adding a little bit to the mood of the photo, and that was all done in the highlights contrast because the highlights um, are the uh, or the highlights contrast is going to impact the sky because if you look at it, that's the uh, area that has the most highlights in it. So there we are with advanced contrast, and then I went to adjustable gradient, and let me show you the top. Um, all I did is just add a little bit of warmth. You can see. Let me show you that difference one more time. There's the before, where you can see it's a bit bluer, and the after, it's also now a bit warmer, which is bringing back some of that, uh, kind of reducing that blue. Um, and I think that makes it go well with kind of the color sheen that's kind of reflecting on the side of the building and on the cobblestones and stuff. Just as a more blue photo, 
I think it's uh, it was looking a little bit too blue. So I did that. Um, that was it. Again, subtle adjustment in the top. And then for bottom, exposure lift and reduce the warmth a little bit. So if you look at the bottom of the photo now, you can see it's a little bit darker and now a little bit brighter. And I wanted to brighten it because if you think about it, this light is shining down on these cobblestones. I want that street, which is my leading line, I want that to be brighter so that the eye is kind of drawn through it. Um, and so that was kind of how that worked. And I cooled it off just a tiny bit. Uh, and after that, it was popping over to Dodge and Burn. And I wish I could show you the mask, but if you look at the photo, there's the after. Let me show you one more time before and the after. So I darkened a little bit up here. I darkened it a little bit down there and I brightened it a little bit in here and a little bit over here. So if you look at those areas one more time before, a little bit brighter in the distance and I feel like visually it ought to be a little bit darker because it's further away um, and those lights are not gonna be as strong. And I wanted to darken some of this, again, drawing the viewer's eye into the photo and after, Slightly darker over there, darker down there, a little bit brighter there. So simple stuff, pretty basic, and again, not major moves, but they're making, uh, cumul cumulatively, they're making a big impact on the photo. Now at this point, I was essentially done with the shot. I went back here to the uh, Essentials tab, and I got a vignette, and I dropped that onto the center of the photo. There you go. Now you can see what that did for me. Uh, I did, um, you know, I chose a subject kind of down here, a little bit lower in the uh, center, which is kind of in the road. Obviously dark in the edges, that's what a vignette is. Um, and then used a fair amount of inner light, which is also helping me to brighten that uh, bit of the uh, cobblestone street. So one more time before vignette and after. That's a powerful addition. Obviously it's darkening the edges, which is sort of complementing what I did with Dodge and Burn. Also complementing um, how I lightened with Dodge and Burn a little bit of that pathway. So one more time before and after. And that's really my entire workflow. So there's the base photo, kind of boring sky. You already know about sky replacement um, and how well that works. And um, I didn't really like the distribution of light. And of course I didn't really like the colors. And I think I had a huge impact here. I feel like I've got the colors reflecting on the buildings looking a bit more like they should look to uh, kind of correlate, if you will, with the sky that I chose. And then of course added some drama with some of these filters like Mystical and um, Orton and then using Dodge and Burn, uh, Adjustable Gradient and Advanced Contrast. But the vignette was really the, the last thing to top it all off. Let me show you this sliders before and after, before and after. And that's what I'm talking about as a transformation. It's a pretty big move, but if you look at it, uh, to me, it doesn't look like oh my God, he did all these crazy things to transform the photo and the base photo didn't look anything like the original, or excuse me, like the fin finished photo. Um, obviously it's the same photo, but I, I don't know, I feel like it's a subtle transformation. Maybe, maybe the word is believable. Um, maybe I'm biased too because I just edited the photo, but I feel like doing these small incremental sort of changes, uh, moving the light, adjusting the colors a little bit, Obviously the sky replacement is a fairly big change, but other things were fairly incremental and kind of minor in terms of how I move the sliders, but it got me a long way. And so something to think about when you're editing is you know, keep in mind your edits are cumulative, uh, which is also why I start with the replacement of the sky first, because everything else is gonna impact the entire photo. So there's my transformation for today. One more time, base photo and a final photo. Hope it helps my friends. I hope it gave you a few ideas, things that you can try on your own photos. And I do appreciate you watching very much. Hope you're staying safe out there. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you again real soon and adios.